All right, in this episode, we are finally putting the 351 in the Lightning. So, subscribe down below, because we also have the Cobra back, which is gonna be in the next episode that you guys will see. So subscribe to see the cage work on the 1,000 horsepower Cobra, and enjoy us finally making some really big steps on the Lightning. <laughs> putting the 351 and the lightning uh, now we're as you saw in the previous videos we have the trick flow box R intake manifold on this motor which is ginormous it's about two inches taller uh, than the GT 500 or the GT 40 intake I'm still sleeping the GT 40 intake manifold that came off but normally there is a ridge that goes across this whole firewall I'm not sure if you guys can see this but last night we flattened it out and pushed it up as much as we could um, and we got probably about an inch and a half more of clearance and we kind of rounded it with the firewall So hopefully the intake will fit right in there. What did Dan oh, do? We got the plate machine down Put like an inch intake spacer, so we Got it CNC milled and down like about three-eighths of an inch just so we could get better clearance For the firewall. So you might be thinking what the hell does that even mean? The box art intake has like this kind of weird design where it has a, a plate that bolts to the bottom of the box and then that plate bolts to the intake manifold that's about an inch thick. So Dan took it and got it CNC down to about a half inch thick. So overall the intake should be about an inch and a half taller, uh, which we should now have clearance for. So hopefully that works. But anyway, stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, we really, really are excited to see what it looks like in the engine bay. Even though I hate all the factory brackets back on the front of the motor, it looked way more badass without that stuff on it. But next year, it will have nothing on the front except for a pro charger hanging off of it. So it'll be a lot better then. Uh, so anyway, here's, uh, let's get to work. All right, so we are preparing to drop the engine in right now. We have the uh, trans jacked up about as far as it'll come up. It's in the firewall right there. And since we got rid of everything that's on this thing, the only thing that's really in our way is the power steering, power steering pump. So we're gonna kind of sag that out of the way and drop the engine in, I think. Oh, yeah. Is that it? What else do we do? That's it, right? There's no other preparations needed. All right, well, here we go. Cue time lapse. All right, Dan is tightening the transmission to engine mounts and the motor is temporarily in place. The reason, only reason I say temporarily is we might have to lift the engine up in order to get the headers in. This side looks like it's gonna be tight, might require some modifications of the trans lines. This side looks like it should be a breeze. But the engine is starting to look right at home. Oh my gosh, it looks so much better than the factory one even with the ugly accessories on the front. How's it going, Dan? Good. Good to get it. We get a thumbs up? Yeah. Bam. <laughs> well, uh, I think that's what we got for you for now. Can't really see much of what we're gonna be doing for the next few minutes, but we're going to just try to sneak the headers in and we'll show you guys the fitment on those as well because we've had quite a few questions about the header fitment. So we will be able to answer that momentarily. All right, I'm pretty pumped. We got the headers on and they actually do really fit well. My hair's really messed up today. Don't mind me. Uh, but anyway, let's get, get you some top fitment. 
clears everything really well. This is the tightest side, and the only issue, well, we'll show you guys from the bottom, but the issue is, is that the uh, cylinder one primary is touching the trans lines. So we're gonna end up putting a heat shield over the whole trans line anyway, just so it doesn't pick up any excess heat and doesn't touch the header. Uh, but you'll see underneath where it's touching. We gotta tweak it a little bit. This side has tons of room. We don't need to worry about anything. And now that they're in there, we can worry about how the fuel line routing's gonna go. This side has room in the frame rail. I mean, this side's really easy. But we're gonna lift the truck up. So now we'll lift the truck up. We'll show you guys the fitment underneath. Um, the Cook's headers come with a three bolt flange. So we're gonna order you know, the starting part of that, the collector, to start building the rest of the exhaust once everything else is pretty much done. That's gonna be like the last part of the series. Uh, we're gonna do an exhaust actually on this, very similar to the red car. If you haven't seen the red car, here's the link above, because it sounds wicked. Probably gonna do a very similar setup on this. Yeah, this one's right on the frame rail. We're gonna have to tweak that one over, because that one sits right on there. So we're gonna put something in that and try to give it a little bit of a bend that way. Nothing crazy, but that's enough to cause a vibration. I mean, only an eighth of an inch. So that's not good. This side, on the other hand, don't need to worry about anything, except for a wide band. Both sides need to worry about a wide band. Think it already. Not gonna get a wide band in this. Huh? Not gonna get a wide band in this passenger side. No way. They needed to face down more. Oh no, not the passenger side. The driver's side should be okay. Is that an aftermarket one? Yeah. So at least we can get one on that side. Yeah, that ain't happening. No way over there. Good thing we only need one, I guess. Cooks, if you're listening. Yeah, move that bung back and down. Preferably on both sides. Or up. Yeah, or up in the straight up, really. Straight up, you have plenty of room. If it could though. This is where it's hitting the trans line right there. But that's got room to be tweaked up. So we'll be working on that. But otherwise the only fitment issue I see is right here. I don't know how we're gonna get that to tweak over, but we're gonna have to. So there you have it. Cook's lightning headers. Fit pretty good. So we're gonna uh, mess with the fitment on that passenger side header. We're gonna snug up the bolts the rest of the way. Um, that's, pre that's pretty much it on the headers and the exhaust. We're gonna put it down and start putting accessories on it, start putting the radiator and the fans in it, hooking up hoses, power steering, all that stuff. So we're gonna start just slamming her together. All right guys, so we're making some progress. We got some accessories on it. We got an idea how we're gonna wrap the belt. Um, we had the radiator in it, but we have a like a generic Flexalite electric fan kit. I'll put the uh, product number on the screen and then the link in the description below. But it's really just a generic kit for the size of the radiator. So we got the shroud tucked in with the seal on both sides. It fits really nice. But now we just got to figure out a way to mount it to the radiator. So they supply you like a handful of different kind of brackets. They give you four of those. They give you two of these big ones. So you can see where we mark this just to show you what we're going to do before we do it. Um, this is going to go on here like this. And we're going to trim the excess off and then probably in these corners too. And then we'll have to elongate these holes, uh, which then we'll push down to the fans, bolt it down, and that'll be it. Top and bottom, same thing.
Got our fab shop going over here. <laughs> We're doing good. So I hate using the Dremel, but we got the carbide tip on it. So here's the top bracket. That's gonna squeeze down. That one's gonna be pretty tight. And the rear one, we elongated the holes so it's perfect. So that's gonna be our uh, fan mounting situation. We just gotta, oh, you gotta pull the paper tape off this front one. OEM fresh. Bam, baby. We cut the edges so it fits. It's gonna look great. Sounds good to me. Looks good to me. And so we have the uh, fan wiring completed. Now with the Holly HP, it's gonna have a ground wire just like the big stuff did on the red car to trigger the relays. So we're gonna run a dual relay setup just like on the red car uh, to the fans. So what we did is we just combined them all. We really only want on and off. We don't need to worry about high speed, low speed. So we combined all the wires to two 10 gauge wires. We loomed it, we came through the fan shroud and now we're gonna bolt this back on to the radiator and throw the radiator back in, back in the car. So, but it looked really nice, it turned out good. Um, and, I, and I think Brian's really gonna like it, so I'm happy with the wiring on this. I'm more happy with the mounting on the radiator on this. I'm really happy with this whole fan situation in general. So is Dan. Alright, got the wiring coming out, and the beauty, I like it. Now we're going to get it up in the car, we'll show you guys what that looks like, a couple bolts, sits in a mount, so check it out. But let's show you the gold, the goody goody gold. It's going to take seven minutes to put the lift down, so uh, cue time lapse. Let's see the magic. So Dan took the adapter plate on the box R. I think we've already talked about this, but the adapter plate on the box R has a plate that bolts to the bottom of the intake, which bolts to the lower intake, which is now right here. And it's about a half inch thick. Originally, it's uh, an inch thick. Got a machine down. So you know, he had it milled down. And now our clearance. I can't quite put my finger back there, but it's pretty even all the way around the back and uh, it fits beautifully. Now we smashed in the firewall to fit. You can follow this seam right there and it used to go all the way across which would be hitting right on the back of the intake manifold right now if it was still there. And we smashed that up and painted it. You can't even really tell. Looks factory. Looks fantastic in my opinion. Now we're thinking we're going to put like the map sensor here, we'll probably put the fuel pressure regulator here, maybe, who knows, everything's up for debate, yeah, discussion, but look how good that looks. Tons of clearance to put a pro charger pulley on for the crank. I mean, this is a nice, a nice setup for sure. I'm digging it a lot. I think the only other place that I would be splurging money is a $300 or so 
to put an aftermarket, like a March setup, and then you'd need a 3G alternator, but changing the alternator and, you know, the accessory stuff. And you might be asking why we're not doing that. Nothing that we've done so far has really been counterintuitive of what we're gonna do in the future. Everything's like a spend money once type of thing. So everything that's in this motor is gonna be used when we put a blower on it, when we put a dart bottom end on, dart block and bottom end in it. I mean, all that stuff is gonna be reused. So the March accessory drive is not gonna get reused. Once we put the Pro Charger on it, we gotta change all the accessory drive stuff anyway. So we don't feel like doing that twice, nor do we feel like spending the money twice. So that's why we opted out. We're just gonna run a short belt. We deleted the AC, we deleted the smog pump. We're gonna run a short belt on it and it's gonna work great. We painted everything so it looks great, but it just doesn't look as good and as clean as a March setup. So that would be one place that I would have splurged. Um, if we knew that we weren't gonna do much to it in the future, then absolutely, hands down, we would have done it. But that is it on the Lightning for now. Subscribe down below, because in the next video, we are going to be installing the entire fuel system, all E85 compatible, even though we're probably not gonna be using E85, which means that we'll show you guys how to assemble PTFE fittings, um, and go over the quality of Fregola line and the, uh, who makes that, fuel sector? Fuel sector for and uh, Ford's flow sector fittings. So that's what we're gonna be using on this truck along with installing the four innovations uh, regulator and yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. We're actually like as far as we can get without more parts. So I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna order fire core wires for it, I'm gonna order an AccuFab throttle body, and some other miscellaneous odds and ends, some small stuff, we probably got another few hundred dollars to order tonight. Uh, then on the next video, you guys will see that installed, building the fuel system, and then final segment will be getting the Holly HP on and finishing up the wiring job. So from me and Dan, I want to thank you guys again for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already done so below. I hope you guys are enjoying this build. We made some crazy, crazy headway today. I'm so happy with the progress that we made, and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.